Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ahmad Zia Abdulohab and this is Highlights in Radiology. In today's episode, we are going to talk about a topic that I personally find it very difficult and I think that we need to talk about it together. And this is the differentiation between renal cell carcinoma and oncocytoma. See, renal cell carcinoma and oncocytoma are not difficult to differentiate from each other only in radiology. They are difficult to differentiate in a clinical presentation and even in histopathology, they are not easy to differentiate from each other. So in today's talk, which will be a short one, uh, I'll try to present some points that might help you to differentiate renal cell carcinoma from oncocytoma in your everyday practice. So pay attention, please. Let's start. Regarding renal cell carcinoma, it's also known as hypernephroma or Grauwitz tumor. They are the most common malignant renal tumors. Usually occurs at around the age of 50 to 70 years old. They present most commonly with macroscopic hematuria. Sometimes they present with renal pain or things like that. On imaging, they have a very wide variety of radiographic appearances. They can be solid. They can be relatively homogeneous or markedly heterogeneous. They can have uh, areas of uh, necrosis. They can have cystic changes and even hemorrhage. Uh, on ultrasound, they appear as a solid or partially cystic masses. They can be hyper-echoic, isoechoic, or even hypoechoic to the surrounding renal parenchyma. They might have a pseudocapsule, which appears uh, as a hypoechoic halo around them. For example, in this case, we can see there is a renal mass here that appears relatively hyper-echoic to the surrounding renal parenchyma, and this was a renal cell carcinoma. While in this example here, you can see there is a heterogeneously hypoechoic mass with areas of cystic changes. Again, it's a renal cell carcinoma. While here we have a solid hypoechoic mass in the renal cortex, and it's a renal cell carcinoma. On CT scan, if it's a non-contrast CT, the region will appear as a soft tissue mass with an attenuation around 20 to 70 household unit. Uh, if the region is large, they might have areas of necrosis, and around 30% of the lesions will show some calcification. In the corticomedullary phase of the enhancement, and that's around 25 to 70 seconds after the beginning of contrast injection, the, the renal cell carcinoma demonstrate variable uh, post-contrast enhancement, usually less than the uh, normal renal cortex. The small lesions may have a similar amount of post-contrast calcification, and even they can be difficult to detect if they are small. The small lesions enhance homogeneously, okay, while the large lesions show a regular heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement because they contain area of necrosis. There are a lot of histological subtypes. The clear cell subtype may show a strong post-contrast enhancement. If you see intraluminal growth of the lesion into the lumen of the uh, renal vein, it will can happen in around 10%, and this is a very important point to uh, detect, and we will say why. In the nephrographic phase, which is after the corticomedullary phase, it's around 80 to 180 seconds. It's the most sensitive phase for detection of abnormal uh, post-contrast enhancement. It's around 80 to 180 seconds after the start of the injection. The metastases usually they are hypervascular, they enhance, and they are best appreciated on the arterial phase of uh, post-contrast enhancement. That's in the early part of the acquisition, around 25 to 40 uh, seconds after the start of the injection. So if you are looking for metastases, 
to the arterial phase of post-cut thrust enhancement. If you look at this CT scan, first we can see that this lesion here in the corticomedullary phase of post-contrast enhancement, it's enhancing, but it's less than the adjacent renal parenchyma. While in this example, you can see that the lesion has some areas of calcification here and there, and again, it's enhancing, but less than the surrounding parenchyma. If you can look at the adjacent parenchyma, they are enhancing more. While in this example, you can see that the lesion starts to enhance vividly, showing some heterogeneous contrast enhancement, and there are areas of necrosis, and this is due to the large size of the lesion, and you can see the extension into the renal pelvis. It's extending into the renal collecting system. In this example, that's the thing I want to talk to you about. If it's large enough, the lesion is showing heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. It has an area of uh, central necrosis, and obviously it's extending into the renal vein and causing an intraluminal extension of the lesion into the renal vein. And here we have to distinguish between one of two entities. Is this a tumor extending into the IBC, or it's just a thrombus, a plain, bland thrombus, they call it. It's just clotted blood. And how, because this will make a big difference in the management. Uh, if it's uh, the renal cell carcinoma extending into the renal vein, that's a much poorer prognosis than if it is a blood thrombus. And how do we differentiate that? Well, basically, the renal cell carcinoma thrombus will enhance, like here. You can see this thrombus is enhancing compared to the rest of the. Uh, tumor and the kidney, while the bland thrombus, the just clotted blood, does not enhance. So you have to look for the enhancement in the extension into the renal vein. This is very important thing to look for. Look at this example here. This is a filling defect in the right renal vein. However, is it enhancing? No, it's not. You see this kidney and this thrombus is not enhancing, confirming it's a renal vein thrombus, bland thrombus, not a tumor thrombus. So this is a very much better prognosis. Look at this. There is a big mass almost replacing the left kidney, and it's definitely extending into the renal vein, and it is showing heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement, just like the rest of the tumor, confirming that it is a tumor thrombus. If you look carefully, you can see these lesions here in the liver, and they are definitely metastases from renal cell carcinoma. On the MRI, on T1, the tumor will show heterogeneous signal intensity due to necrosis, hemorrhage, solid components. So it will be heterogeneously uh, on uh, it, so so it will appear heterogeneously on T1 weighted images. Well, in the T2 weighted images, the appearance will depend on the histologic subtype. So the T2 MRI weighted images will help us to predict the histologic subtype of the renal cell carcinoma. If it is a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, it will appear hyper intense. While papillary renal cell carcinoma, it's hypo-intense. So you look on the T2-weighted images. If it's hyper-intense, most likely it's a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. If it is hypo-intense, most likely it's a papillary renal cell carcinoma. After contrast, they will show arterial post-contrast enhancement, which, is, which means early post-contrast enhancement. The tumor pseudocapsule, which we talked about in the ultrasound, which appears as a hypoechoic halo around the tumor on ultrasound, in low-grade renal cell carcinoma, you will see it on the MRI. Also, you see it in renal adenomas and in oncocytoma. It appears as a hypo-intense rim between the tumor and the adjacent normal renal parenchyma. You see just a hypo-intense rim between the tumor and the adjacent renal parenchyma, and you will uh, be able to detect enhancement in the thrombus of the renal vein, which help you to differentiate whether this is a bland thrombus or a tumor thrombus, like here. Let's see here. So this is a T2-weighted image, and you can see the hypo-intense uh, renal mass, 
and uh, this makes it more likely to be a papillary carcinoma than a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. On the T1 fat saturated image, it's just iso intense to the rest of the kidney, while on the uh, post contrast image, you can see the mild tetrogenous post contrast enhancement in the arterial phase and at later phase, it shows some washout. Again, here, this is a T2 weighted image, and you can see the tumor here appears relatively hypo intense on T2 weighted images. and this confirms that the tumor is most likely a, a papillary renal cell carcinoma rather than clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Now, what about here? Let's see. This is a T2-weighted image, and the tumor is iso-intense to the kidney. So here we are, not sure whether it's clear cell or papillary renal cell carcinoma. And after contrast enhancement, you can see in the uh, delayed imaging phase in the uh, venous phase, it shows a relatively mild or heterogeneous post contrast enhancement washout. That's why we should take the enhancement, the post contrast enhancement, in the uh, arterial phase, in the early phase. And if you look carefully here, you can see the tumor pseudocapsule of the kidney. Now, let's look here. This is a large renal cell carcinoma replacing almost the entire kidney and it's heterogeneously hypo hyper intense on t2 weighted image so this is difficult to decide the histologic subtype and it shows a heterogeneous post contrast enhancement with areas of central necrosis regarding oncocytoma it's a relatively benign tumor so that's a big problem in differentiating it from renal cell carcinoma Renal cell carcinoma is a malignant tumor. Oncocytoma, it's a benign tumor. And it happens around 60 to 70 years of age. So it's around the same age of renal cell carcinoma. It has 2 to 1 male predilection, similar to renal cell carcinoma. So basically, the only radiographic feature to 100% differentiate oncocytoma from renal cell carcinoma is the presence of metastasis. So if you have a renal mass without signs of invasion or encasement or metastasis to other organs, you always have to report in your differential diagnosis. Differential diagnosis includes oncocytoma and renal cell carcinoma. However, some features might help us point further towards oncocytoma. Like what? First, by ultrasound, you have to evaluate both kidneys because 13% of patients might have multiple oncocytomas, okay? And they call it renal oncocytosis. And up to 32% they have, with the oncocytoma, renal cell carcinoma. So you might, the patient might have both oncocytoma and renal cell carcinoma. This is a very difficult situation. If you're doing an IVP or intravenous pyrogram, some people call it intravenous urogram, the oncocytomas will appear as a sharply demarcated large exophytic masses and they enhance during the nephrographic phase. That's mean early enhancement. While on ultrasound, we will have a well circumscribed mass with ecogenicity similar to the rest of the kidney. So it's usually isoechoic. Try to look for a central scar. Sometimes you are you can see central scar. Example here. You can see in this case of oncocytoma on IVP, you can see there is a large mass causing mass effect on the renal collecting system, and this turned out to be oncocytoma. While on ultrasound, look here, you can see the mass, it's almost isoechoic to the rest of the kidney. And if you look carefully, you can see this tiny central scar in the center. So this will help us suspect oncocytoma more than uh, renal cell carcinoma. While in this example, you can see a very well demarcated lesion that's a little bit hyperechoic compared to the rest of the kidney. On Doppler imaging, the renal uh, oncocytoma will appear hypovascular or will show a decreased 
blood flow inside the lesion and it's causing mass effect displacing the renal vessels laterally uh, for the rest of the kidney and you can see the presence of a central scar here. What about CT scan and the MRI? Let's start with the CT scan. On CT scan, they tend to be large, well-demarcated tumor at presentation. And of course, oncocytoma will not show any evidence of metastasis. So on non-contrast CT, if the region is less than 3 cm in diameter, it will show homogeneous uh, attenuation or homogeneous density, while if it's more than 3 cm, it will show heterogeneous density. And the perinephric fat surrounding, you might see it due to edema of the surrounding fat, and you might even see calcification in the tumor, just like renal cell carcinoma. After we inject contrast, if it's a small tumor that's less than 3 cm, it will enhance homogeneously. If the mass is larger, it will show heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement, again like renal cell carcinoma. Try to look for the central scar. If you see central non-enhancing scar, you are more in favor of oncocytoma, and it's seen around one-third of the patients, so it's not always. If you see a renal vein thrombosis, it will be a blood thrombus, not tumor thrombus. It will not show post-contrast enhancement. It will appear as a filling defect in the renal vein. There is a sign that's called segmental enhancement inversion. This is a very useful sign to detect oncocytoma. There will be two distinct regions of different segmental enhancement in the corticomedullary phase, while it will invert during the nephrographic phase. And it's more common in small tumors that less than 3 cm. We will show you an example so you can understand what are we talking about. In this case of a large, huge renal oncocytoma, you can see it's kind of homogeneous, but with some central heterogeneity, and you can see presence of calcification within the oncocytoma. Again, on the, this arterial phase of post-contrast enhancement, you can see the presence of a large oncocytoma with a prominent central scar, which is a helpful sign, and you can see the thrombus in the IBC that is not enhancing, confirming that it's a bland thrombus. It is not a tumor thrombus. Now, let's look here. This is a huge renal oncocytoma, big mass, central stellate scar. It's not showing marked post-contrast enhancement because this is a portovenous phase or a late phase, relatively late, mm -hmm. and uh, the good thing that helped us to decide that this is an oncocytoma rather than a renal cell carcinoma, it's because big mass, big lesion with no signs of metastasis. Usually, if the tumor reaches this size, it will be metastasized, but here there's no metastasis, so this is a good thing. Now, let's look at this side. We have a mass here, causing mass effect on the renal pelvis, and another one here and they have central scar. So this is bilateral oncocytoma or oncocytosis, and as we said, up to 13% of patients will have bilateral oncocytomas. Here, the lesion contains calcification. It might contain calcification, and look, as big as the lesion, it's well-defined, and the surrounding fatty tissues are relatively normal, clear, no signs of strandering or invasion or extension, helping us to lean further towards the, the oncocytoma rather than renal cell carcinoma. Now, let's talk about the segmental enhancement inversion. Basically, what happens is in the corticomedullary phase, that's the early phase, the lesion will enhance more than the surrounding kidney, while in the early excretory phase, the lesion will enhance less than the surrounding kidney. So it's inverting on two different faces. Just to confirm that, this helps us to differentiate that this is more likely to be an oncocytoma rather than renal cell carcinoma, and this is a very useful sign, especially in small tumors. So, let's see here, this is the early uh, corticomedullary phase. You can see the region here is enhancing more than the surrounding kidney, while on the early while on the early excretory phase, the region is enhancing 
less than the surrounding kidney. This is an inversion sign, segmental inversion sign, helping us to differentiate that this is more likely to be oncocytoma rather than renal cell carcinoma. On MRI, the lesion, the oncocytoma tends to be hypo-intense compared to the renal cortex and uh, hyper-intense on T2-weighted images, and you might see the presence of a central stellate scar, and it will show homogeneous post-contrast enhancement if it is small lesion and heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement if it is large lesion, and you might see the presence of a central scar. For example, here you can see this lesion is hypo-intense to the renal cortex on T1-weighted images, and it's hyper-intense to the renal cortex on T2-weighted images with a presence of a central scar. Again, here you can see this is a T2-weighted image. The lesion is large, heterogeneous, but hyper-intense with the presence of renal scar. And this is an oncocytoma. Again, T2-weighted image. It's a well-demarcated lesion that is slightly hyper-intense to the adjacent renal cortex with the presence of a central scar. The same lesion on T1-weighted image, you can see it's hypo-intense compared to the adjacent cortex. Of course, this is a T1 fat-saturated image. After we give contrast, we can see the homogeneous post-contrast enhancement with the presence of a central scar. This will be all for today. I hope you find it beneficial and you learned how to decide whether the tumor is most likely oncocytoma or renal cell carcinoma. Uh, this was all. I hope to see you next Friday. I want to remind you to subscribe and share. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for the coming episode, please share it with us in the comment section. Don't forget to help us, support us by sharing and subscribing to the channel. This was Dr. Ahmadiyya Abdul Wahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology. See you next Friday. Bye.